Hello and welcome to the seventh episode of the Extreme Hardware Podcast. As usual, we have the incredible, very delectable uh, Frick Frock 2.0 joining us. That, that delectable one. I don't think I've ever been called that today. <laughs> you're quite yeah, you're delectable. actually uh, 997 Frick Frocks off. <laughs> Tasty boy. It's very good. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Nine, How are you? 997 Frick Frocks off? Yeah, he's uh, 997 models newer. Oh, yes, right. That took a while. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. We also have the um, actually special and not special in a special way, Simmons with us. Hi. And then we have Chris. Yeah, speaking of special, a doctor literally told me that I had autism this week, so that's funny. <laughs> Your superpower. <laughs> Welcome to the Extreme Hardware Podcast. Okay, so <laughs> thank you, Chris, for that intro. Yeah, you want to see my medical records? I no, we're not. No, no, we're not talking about your medical record on stream on the show. <laughs> stream, close enough, but no. Okay, so have you guys heard about the iPhone SE? No. no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well. This makes the segue even worse. So <laughs> the iPhone SE 2 is going to be coming out, apparently. Um, it is a rumor, but it is rumored that they're working on the SE 2, which is basically, it appears to be an iPhone 11 body with the latest iPhone... No, wait, sorry, an iPhone 10 body with the latest <laughs> iPhone 11. Chip. I think they just call that an iPhone 11, Alex. <laughs> well, it's confusing. All the numbers are kind of don't line up. Like the A13 Bionic chip is the latest one with the iPhone 11. And the 11, sorry, and then the 11 is a successor to the X, which is actually a 10. Apple's naming scheme is awful. It yeah. sounds yeah. like it. I was gonna Not say, as what? bad as AMDs. Uh, we'll, we'll get there, though. Cool enough for that last episode. AMD? Let's give them a break. I was going to say, AMD? before we... We yeah. talk about the uh, the SE two. What what is the iPhone SE? I've I've never heard of it. It's so a iPhone, cheap budget iPhone. Basically, it was people who really wanted the iPhone five body, but wanted a newer iPhone. So it's the iPhone six S's internals inside an iPhone five body. Oh, okay. Um, you know, if you just basically hate the palm of your hand and you really like a square brick and as a phone, I uh, mean, it has rounded corners. Yeah, it's not as round as the iPhone six was. Yeah, you're right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you would, being the only native iPhone user here. No, no I have an iPhone. There's, a, there's like two of us. It's a lot, okay? Three. <laughs> Three? Oh, yeah, yeah that's the majority one. of us. Oh, yeah, Chris, you've got an iPhone. There's yeah. no way in hell Frick has a, an iPhone. There's Do no not, way. you are correct. I feel like Frick Dang. has a Nokia. I, I'm glad there's at least one insane person here with me. What? Frick, are you using a <laughs> Windows phone? Ah, no. They gave you know, for a while. They were giving those out for free. Yeah, yeah. sounds great. Couldn't get rid I've of them. I've got a feeling, Frick, do you own like one of those disposable phones that are definitely not meant for drug dealers? Oh, I have. Hang on, let me see. I have... Oh, oh here God. we go. Yeah, no, I have... So I have two. One of them is... Um, uh, actually, I got a phone that's got a 5,000 milliamp battery. It's called a Blue Studio Energy. You'd charge this thing once or twice a month, last the whole month. Weeks off one charge. It's the best thing ever. Why? Blue Studio Energy. <laughs> that's the name of it. No, but why? No, Big battery. That, I mean, it doesn't look you, terrible. Alex, the only person on the planet that apparently doesn't care about battery and is fine with charging your phone like every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I am. I put I, it on my wireless charger at night and it does its thing. I, I miss my flip phone that would just stay charged for like four weeks. That was that yeah, was a see, wonderful that, time. We're not just, supposed to be going backwards with technology. I no, don't like. No. I had a, a Samsung. No, what did I have? I had this old brick phone. This what was it? It was a razor. There was no razor flip phone. That thing was horrible. But it lasted for like three weeks on one charge. Wait, hang on, hang on. Razor flip phone. Is that the same razor as that razor, or is yep. that just the same? Is it? No, no, oh, it's not. Hang on. It's no, the Motorola I'm... Razor. Oh yeah. wait, yeah, yeah, you're okay. I'm. I was gonna say I didn't. Th nope. Razor oh, is the name of the 
Oh, yeah. <clears throat> no, 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 no. Uh-huh. No, the, the Razer was the name of the phone. We're not talking about Razer, the gamer company. Yeah. Yeah, gamers. Well, I, Razer um, when my, when my, I thought it was my iPhone, no, my HTC One died. That was an awful phone. And I had like <laughs> a week where I couldn't get a phone. So I went back to a Nokia. It was a successor to the 3310. And I was using this in like 20, I don't know, 14. No, it was like 2014. So, you know, it was very out of place and very unused to using a phone that lasted like, yeah, like three weeks on battery. I actually found it kind of annoying to use the battery, but just the specific battery aspect, because I kept feeling like I should charge the thing, but the battery never went down. And there was only three (laughs) bars of battery life. So I was like, is this faulty? Truly charging. So, so here's the thing. Before I got my first smartphone, which was the Galaxy oh S4, God, I had wow. this thing, which was a horrible. LG Lotus Elite. No, this thing was wonderful. The keypad on it was fantastic. It did exactly what I needed to do, which was make a phone it's a call. Wall Iron Simmons. It, well, it was about the size of a small hockey puck, and it was about as durable as one too. Like I had several people chuck it across a football field, and it was just fine. Like this, God, this phone was wonderful in terms of durability. Tech. I can see you're American by using very non-standard metrics of measurement there. The size of a hockey puck and chuck it across the football field. Ah, uh, yes, I know <laughs> exactly first of all, what those things are. First of all, Alex, the latter one is anecdotal experience because Mr. Simmons presumably did not have any kind of force gauge at which he chucked his phone. Well, Give and besides, I was not the one throwing the phone. Also bad. <laughs> and and hockey puck, like you live in Canada, you have no excuse here. <laughs> Dang, Simmons, 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 are you are you talking about hockey puck phones? Because if we're on the subject of horribly shaped hockey puck phones, oh uh, dear, may I introduce oh. the Simmons Zalbri Six. <laughs> now, for those that don't know what this is, but because it's a podcast, I guess they can't see it. The Zalbri Six, they will be able to see it. And it has, okay, you know, like one of those compact mirrors. It's basically a compact mirror with the lower half being the phone with the numpad and all that. And then the top half literally being like this two by two screen. And the whole <laughs> thing is the shape of a hockey puck and you close it like a mirror. It's, yeah, but it, it looks like that. it is a mirror. Yeah. That, yeah. It probably is a mirror, like around the screen, which is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty bad. I mean, like I love this old tech. Like this was this was right before like handheld computers started be being like accessible to the people, and oh, we yeah, were they, yeah. Like this was obviously designed for a a Very audience specific. that yeah, yeah an exactly. audience that like likes the like those little compact things that I never see anybody use anymore. First of all, <laughs> this is two thousand three. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember those luxury like the the designer phones? Like Nokia had a whole brand or range that were like, you know, very expensive for the time, like eight hundred like dollar phones, and they were like, oh, this is premium leather and stainless steel and titanium. Oh, they still make those. You mean like the Ferrari phone? phone? Yeah, there's one oh, specific the Ferrari manufacturer phone. that makes those. They're like ten thousand dollars or something, and yeah. all they do is they're basically feature phones that just they just cover in leather and diamonds. That's it. Oh, nice. I also hate poor people. <laughs> I think they're called like the Ver- Virtu. They're called Virtu. V E R T U. That's what they're called. Virtu phones. Yeah, are they yeah, still yeah. In business? No. Oh, they're very, very well off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here, here, here is an example of one of those Virtu smartphones yeah, that is just encased in leather. That doesn't and, uh, look good. No, but Why it's is Ferrari there a branded. Fiber wallpaper. It's Ferrari branded. It's it's clearly for the for the one percent so that can afford a Ferrari. Hang on, um, I'm guessing this is like just from the the OS. That's not even Android. I'm guessing this is like 2010. Uh, more or less. I mean, I think Quite it was. It doesn't, it doesn't, honestly, the skin. bottom of it doesn't look that bad. The top is awful, but the bottom is not that bad. Like, I had a leather back to LG G4, and it was actually surprisingly nice. The only issue with leather on a phone is that um, it wears really quickly and it yeah. gets really dirty. Yeah. Also, the LG had an issue where it unsolded itself and um, my phone <laughs> killed itself. Literally, oh, not even exaggerating, two days out of warranty. 
I just so. checked to see what Virtu is doing. Well, first thing, I went to their website and I got a, a drive-by virus. So don't go to Virtu.com. <laughs> Uh, you will get a virus. Like, don't did do you it. just type in virtue.com or did yeah, you? Yeah, and I got a virus from it. Um, it, it, it you know, the, their website is vipluxuryphones.cn. It's not virtue.com. Oh, well, <laughs> either way, don't go to virtue.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they're out of business. Like, I think they're dead. Yeah, I wouldn't be yeah, surprised. <laughs> well, I mean, who's buying them? Nobody, Nobody anymore. <laughs> See, if yeah. I were rich and wanted to show off my expensive taste, I would simply buy a Galaxy Fold. Ooh. Well, Ooh. <clears throat> we've seen some people doing that. Yeah. $3,000 such a dumb idea. $3,000 doesn't even buy you a headphone jack. Mm -hmm. That's what you guys need. If you guys like the old school, may I introduce you to the F88 wrist phone? <laughs> oh, now, man. Dude, hell yeah. I would have that. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Dude, that's like was, that's like the spike is Star Trek. Trek. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it was awesome. made for Chinese ping pong players. Okay, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's very specific. <laughs> that's why it was made. It was so, made like, not Japanese ping pong, ping pong players, no Koreans, just Chinese. That'd be Chinese. It's made by a company called CEC Corporation. Oh, um, yes. And yeah, well, it is. Yeah. I mean, I would I would actually wear this today, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. It's for those that, so that they can't see it. It's basically a giant, I guess you would call it like a like a Spider-Man web slinging device on your wrist with a screen sticking out of the back of it. Except I, the screen is literally parallel to your wrist, so you I'm can definitely put yeah, this like, in the. Here, I'm putting this in the thumbnail. Like, I. I have no desire or use for a smartwatch. Smartwatches are just really underwhelming. Mm -hmm. And I'm really disappointed by how small electronics have gotten, yet how sparse the selection of wrist-mounted computers are. Because, hell yeah, dude, I would use one of those. That's See, really neat. I managed to get my smartwatch for super cheap. It was like $80 or $90 or something like that. It's one of those uh, tick watch. I think it was a Kickster company or whatever. But um, like honestly, this is like the epitome of... I can look at my phone to see who's calling me without taking it out of my pocket. And that's what I use it for. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, well, Apple is the largest watch manufacturer on the planet. Did you guys know that? I'm not Lo surprised. Bigger than Timex, bigger than Rolex, bigger than all of them. Okay, Apple so, is the largest watch manufacturer. So I'm curious as to how they're uh, defining that metric. Because it's, if it's in terms of gross product, are they only talking about the Apple watches? Or are they actually talking about the entire product line? Because that's a skewed metric. I think um, they're also article. Right now, They're here we also go. So, the, uh, the iPhone, because everybody uses that as a watch replacement. Yeah, okay, so here it is. It's an article from Investopedia. Apple is the biggest watch maker in the world. Apple is now the largest. What? How many times are you gonna say the lead? According to estimates by research firm Asimico, Apple has sold approximately 15 million watches at an average price of 330 dollars. Mm. In comparison, the Switch uh, company Rolex in the same year sold uh, one million watches. And only made four point seven billion. That's a lot of watches from Rolex, though. I do. Yeah, one million gets you four point seven billion. I know who I'd rather be. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. There. I mean, technically speaking, Apple is the most successful watch company in the world. Yeah. Did yeah. you know that uh, Lego is the largest tire manufacturer in the world by the number of tires? <laughs> that makes, that makes complete sense, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But like, if I were to buy a smartwatch again, I'd probably get an iWatch. I um, I had a Pebble, which you know the original. That's like the original right. smartwatch. Yeah, the the ones that actually work. But it was so pointless. Like, I bought it on Kickstarter. I bought it for super cheap because I was part of the Kickstarter thing. And it's kind of like, okay, I have a watch now. That's, <laughs> you know, it's um that paperback, same as the um um those e-readers are and it's like it can tell me the weather very rudimentarily it can i can read sms's so long as it's like you know five words yeah right and mm. uh, i can accept calls but it didn't really work that well so i ended up accepting them on my um my phone anyway and it was like this was 80 dollars yay <laughs> okay do you want you my I think is the most hilarious thing about the smartwatches though is like the ones where they tout that they have the gps built in smartwatch I was no like, it just used bluetooth with my phone but that's, that's the thing it right it's like because 
because when I was getting this smartwatch here, they had the upgraded model, which had the GPS built into the watch. And my question was like, what's the point? Because I'm going to have my phone on me all the time when I'm using the watch anyway. Yeah. Um, the one thing I do like is the accelerometer so you can get better sort of tracking if you're, you're exercising. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it's kind of hard to see the use for it. Like if you're a runner, I can really see the use of the um, Apple Watch because it's basically as expensive. It's more expensive, but it's within margin of like the Garmin stuff and um, other sort of accurate Fitbits, basically. And yeah. it looks nice, I guess. It works really well with your iPhone, yeah, but, but I don't have a use. But the, in the, in the fitness tracker was even a pointless feature for me because I always run with my phone in my hand, so it doesn't Ooh, matter. I could never do that. <laughs> that seems like a good way to it throw doesn't... your phone at the road. <laughs> yeah. You don't, I, but Chris, you don't run, so all right. how would you know? First of all, <laughs> that's because I can't <laughs> run. So... <laughs> Disclaimer, Chris can run, he just doesn't want to. Um, <laughs> so I, I would just like to, on the topic of risk computers, I'd like to make a call back to last week. Remember the uh, the GPD Win 2 that we were talking about? That's very epic. One of those, but with a wrist strap. I mean, that's um, possible, right? Hook me the heck up. Yeah. That's I, really my only contribution to make. I, I would be still yeah, my I, one. I, I, I feel like if you're gonna go that if you're gonna go that route, why not just get like an Adreno and like a screen and just jerry rig it from there? Wow, frick, a 16 megahertz AVR chip versus a 2.6 gigahertz. Oh, it's Core M, so it's trash, but it's... Well, yeah, exactly. X86. What exactly are you going to be doing on your wrist that's so resource-intensive? Uh, playing video games. <laughs> we got to play Minecraft. Dude, that so, you know... Fortnite Season 2. <laughs> Absolutely not. You know, um, some watch, like, uh, more expensive watches have that... I can't remember the feature they call it, but, like, Psycho has it where it recharges the watch with kinetic energy. Yes, yes. A fossil and a lot of them have that. It's really cool because you can essentially I like that. never have to wind your watch again. Oh, I, yeah, I have a watch with that. It's pretty bad when it gets low on energy. Like, you need to shake that thing for like an hour. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know. Seriously. Uh, no, 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 Yeah, because it, yeah, it's terrible to like jump start, But... Why don't um, smartwatches have that? Is it just expensive, I guess? Uh, it's I mean, I feel like out. it would just take up a lot more bulk. Like, think, think, about, think about how much energy a smartwatch uses compared to a regular watch, because I don't think they're harnessing a whole lot of energy from, uh, from your motion sayer. Smartwatch has to be charged, like, once every couple of days. Yeah, I suppose. Okay, so. so I just looked into it. Apparently, there is a self-charging smartwatch called the Sequent Watch. Is that the uh, one that charges from your body heat? Um, so apparently, it had a goal of 80,000 CHF. What the hell currency is that? Uh, francs. Swiss francs. francs. So it had a, a goal mm. of 80,000 francs. It got 1 million francs. Why are smartwatches always on Kickstarter? Because Kickstarter is a no bunch of weirdos. <laughs> no, but like smart watches, they just always are on Kickstarter, unless it's from Samsung or Apple. Well, because, because it's guaranteed funding, because everybody wants to get in on the hip new smartwatch, hoping that the new one is going to be the better <laughs> one. that the new one so, will be good. <laughs> right, exactly. Just out of interest, before we move on to the next topic, what is your favorite, just purely visual? Because visual with a watch is like, a, it's a huge thing. Um, what is visually your most favorite smartwatch because they tend to kind of take very different aspects like where they're trying to look classic a reinvention of what the watch should be or looking like a casio calculator on your wrist <laughs> it's actually kind of cool. <laughs> i love i still have my casio calculator watch <laughs> nerd <laughs> there's this wow. really gorgeous yep. uh tag hewer smartwatch that i like a lot so and... the traditional one is what you prefer then frick Oh, I, I mean, traditional. So here, I'll, I'll put a picture of it in chat. It's, um, it's a tag viewer. It's one of the newest ones that just came out with. It's got this like blue amber mm. face to it. Mm. Uh, okay, I, mean, I went to Google Images for smartwatches. I 
I don't know what I think of any of these. There are so many of them. I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> so, okay, to put a little bit more sort of clarity on this, basically what I mean is like the Samsung, um, oh, the name escapes me, but their smartwatch has got a round face that's trying to imitate a watch, right? Like a traditional analog watch. The i the iWatch or the Apple Watch rather is they don't really care. You know what I mean? They're trying to reinvent, if you will, what a watch should be. Um, it's square and whatever, and sits on your wrist. And then you get a lot of the other sort of Chinese brands that are just either one or the other, or yeah, just like a full on computer. Now, what about you? Know what, Alex? The best combination is that is like a watch that looks like a traditional watch face. Like it's um, what do you call mm. it? It's got like the round. Yeah, like a traditional you analog. Can put, you can put templates of other watches on there. So if you want to make it look like a Rolex, mm. you can make it look like a Rolex. If you want to make it look like an Apple Watch, you can make it look like an Apple Watch. That I think mm. is the benefit to having a smartwatch in the first place. Like you can literally make it look anything you want to. Yeah. Right. So I posted an image in the chat. So that's the Tick Watch E. That's actually the watch that I have. I like it. It's just minimal. Yeah. It's just round um interchangeable wristband which i know is not a novelty feature but like i got a new metal wristband for this thing for like five dollars wow, cool. oh, like, that is a huge thing if you like uh, the apple watch wristbands are like Simmons. very expensive Simmons, you know it's even more yes, minimal Chris. than uh that smartwatch a bare what? wrist what brand is that yes <laughs> but <laughs> look i just think they're pointless but... i'm sorry yeah, no, no, but uh, Frick Frock brought up a good point. It's like you, you, when you're picking out one of these uh, Android based smartwatches, you just pick out the frame that you want, and then you can just download a new face from the App Store for free. Yeah. So, so it's, it's just like for me, with, when I got this one, it was it's light, and it's I almost don't think about it except for when I look at the uh, the tan line on my wrist <laughs> from from the dang thing. Well, <laughs> that wouldn't be an issue in Chris's case. Yeah, because I don't go outside, haha. <laughs> no, because you don't wear a watch, <laughs> but okay. Oh, that's what you were going for. Yeah, you're also <laughs> right. <laughs> you're too self-deprecating, Chris. All right, look, I'm sorry. First of all, I had to leave the house this morning because there are centipedes in the basement now, and I saw one and I got scared. Uh, second of all, yeah, you're right. I don't wear a watch. Okay. <laughs> so uh, on the topic of smartphones so have y'all uh, heard about the announcement of the google pixel 4 and the 4x yes, oh, yes. yes that's in our uh, podcast notes document thank you chris i'm glad you mentioned that chris so <laughs> you mean the the, so it's it exactly seems, like the iphone 11 it, it basically except for there's not enough cameras I can't tell how so cameras it's obviously not an iphone that's 11. just a prototype mm -mm. i mean that that's basically what it's going to look like at this point. Uh, Snapdragon eight fifty five. That's pretty stock standard at this mm -hmm. point. Yeah. So so the specs between the two models are fairly close. Uh, Snapdragon eight fifty five for both models, six gigs of uh, RAM, uh, sixty four or one hundred twenty eight gig internal storage. Uh, the biggest differences appear to be just the screen size, where you have a five point seven uh, nineteen by nine screen, ten eighty p equivalent on the four. And then you have a 6.3 inch 1440p equivalent on the XL, both at 90 hertz. Uh, two cameras, one telescopic, one standard. Uh, then, not including the front camera, USB C, mm. uh, five gigabit. So they cheaped out on the uh, uh, connectors there, I'm sure. Yeah. IP68 rated, uh, no headphone jack. Okay, I already hate it. <laughs> but what about the bezel <laughs> management? Alex, um, stop uh, standing for headphone look jackless phones. You're you're bad. Your opinions are bad. Yeah. Okay. Look. So this Google Pixel Four and Four XL, I, I kind of I feel like with smartphones, they're kind of gravitating, especially the Android ones. Well, they're the only ones with a variety. They're kind of gravitating towards choose your exterior flavor. Like the internals are very similar yeah, between it's all like of these. All, it's all Snapdragon Eight Fifty Five. Um, so, okay. So since I haven't really been keeping up with smartphones, what is up with 90 Hertz refresh rates on a phone? And what is up with the 19 by nine aspect ratio? I am okay, so, not a fan of either. Okay. 90 Hertz is actually pretty neat. It wasn't really done before because OLED. Um, so there's an, I suppose an interesting caveat if you care about screens. Battery life? 
no, it's variable. It should be variable refresh rate. Not all of them are variable still, refresh rate. Um, still, I, that's just, that's going to get more battery. Just hang on though. So it does provide a noticeable sort of smoothness factor increase. The problem that a lot of these smartphone manufacturers are facing is that these CPU, the the system on our chips are so damn fast that there's a lot of the case, you know, people used to kind of, they have their old phone, they've used it for two years. They go into the store and they try out the new phone and they're like, wow, this, everyone always swipes left and right and goes, wow, it's so smooth. That's oh the my first God. test. Yeah. No, this is it. That's the first test that everyone does. So how do you differentiate yourself if everything basically is just super quick? 90 hertz refresh rate. That's, <laughs> that's the yep. main thing because it oh, feels it. quicker. Um, is it useful? No. Um, because a problem with OLED as well, and I've noticed this a lot with my um, iPhone, is that anytime there's a pure black bit on the screen, let's say there's an image you've got where it's got like two black borders on either side, if you scroll up and down, the amount of like the pixel response is so bad that it leaves this massively long ghosting trail between it. And yeah. it's just smeary, smudgy mess. Um it 90 hertz is not going to fix that at all. No way. And my biggest concern with 90 hertz is is the issue that I have with my S8, where I feel like with the the rapidly refreshing pixels on the screen, I I feel like you can turn it off. And I way. don't have anything. If that's worth mentioning, yeah. I think it's in Android options. You can select 60 or 90 hertz. Right. So. Um, I, I know with my S8, I have really bad burn-in from whenever I'm using either Google Maps or Waze, mm. or actually those are that's what my burn-in is from. And I feel like unless the technology improves to deal with the burn-in issues, I have a theory that 90 hertz is going to just increase how fast it's going to burn in. I'm, I'm quite surprised about... So OLED in, in phones is nowhere near new. Like the S4 had it, right? And right. this is like a very well-known issue. And you would have, and this kind of the solutions are very simple to burn in for like Waze or Google Maps that are open permanently. Why not just shift the pic, like the image, like one pixel right, one pixel left, one pixel up, one pixel down every now and then when you're driving, you won't notice it. Yeah, I, I don't, I see, I don't think that would help, honestly, because quite frankly, uh, especially with something like, uh, Google Maps, for example, just shifting one pixel left or right with the screen density we have these days, it's so negligible. Okay, so more than, I, I don't know what specifically is burnt in with your phone. Um, I'm guessing the... Quite literally, it's the little arrow. And then since I use the Waze app that has the speedometer, mm. uh, if I have a pure white background, I see a ghost image Ooh, of the speedometer. Spooky <laughs> ghost, it's spooktober. I mean... It is spooked over. Yeah, but I mean, I suppose that could be alleviated by just it moves up. Uh, the speedometer itself moves up, left, down, and right. Not by like a pixel, but like a quarter of that entire speedometer image. But that that would then be going back to application developers. And I don't think any of them are willing to do that, especially when people complain about the fact that some apps move around the location of the button they just pressed. <laughs> So it, wow. it's 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 one of those damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of situations. What about with the where Google, the arrow can like change like between the hues, like it can kind of go between a purplish red to a bluish red and whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I mean that would be fine. I mean, just it's it's just when you have that static image, mm -hmm. and then if you also have the adaptive brightness on. Uh, I know on the S8, uh, your screen brightness, there's a little orange portion at the top says, if you put this up here, this could potentially uh, reduce your battery life. I think it's more so for the mm -hmm. burn-in issue. But if you have adaptive brightness on, it disregards that completely. It, it, if the sun is shining on your phone, it will max out your brightness. Yeah, I'd be inter interested so. to see how that works with, I don't know, if that, there's no settings with that within the iPhone. And I know it's got HDR10 something or another, like it's got extra... I don't know. It's brighter. Okay. So you know what? I, I'm just going to say this for a second. You know what the best, the last good handheld was as far as screens go? It was the Game Boy Advance SP, the original one, the AGS-001. <laughs> and you know why? Because 
it didn't have a fancy backlight that had to murder your battery in the sun. No, it had a front light that you could turn off when it was bright. Otherwise, there was just a mirror behind the panel, so you used the sunlight to your advantage, but we aren't seeing that anymore. Despicable. Chris, I hate it. I, I think you're forgetting... Disgusting. Well, I don't just know. Take for granted, I, like, when I, you were using that Game Boy at night under your covers and you had to have another light basically shining on top of it. Uh, no, because this was the SP, so it had a built-in front light. Thank you very much. Wait, was the SP the square exactly. one or the... The SP was square one. The square one that oh, folded. Oh, that was so terrible. Oh, my head. It was the one that had a really bad, bad uh, what do you call it, hinge to it, so it would always break. No, uh, that- no, the SP oh, yeah. had a great hinge. What are you talking about? Yeah, no, no, you're thinking of the dinosaur oh, DS, like the OG DS. Right. The, the hinge always yeah, that's what it was. No, on the SP, that made my thumb fall asleep, or like my, my fingers or something fall asleep, because it pushed well, into you your hand. Well, you should simply not damage your hand with plastic. I, no, my favorite was just the classic advanced. You yeah, know, the, but the, the light was awful. The yeah, was... it was, but it was like that PSP looking type thing. That was the, the best. translucent purple one. That PSP was the looking color. thing. Alex, the PSP came later. Yeah, but it looked <laughs> like the PSP. Are we wrong? Oh, yeah, yeah you can pet the dog. I was going to say because of. Not only that, but Picto chat. Rip Picto. Yeah, Picto. I drew uh, <laughs> offensive images on that. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Safe for the children's. Yeah. I just looked at the price of this Google Pixel 4. I, am I like, am I missing something here? Isn't the Google Pixel supposed to be like the affordable alternative to all this stuff? I'm looking at the price. Nine Pixel more. 4, $800. Four XL, $900. I what what? This doesn't make any sense. That's, that's how they no, always no, no, start, no. though. The um, OnePlus was supposed to be the affordable but well-made smartphone. Look at it now. They had all the features. Yeah, look at it now. It's, I mean, in some cases, it is cheaper, but it, it doesn't have all the features. It's not the sensible I, smartphone anymore. It's just I, another smartphone. Smartphone. And another cool. feature that I think is missing from a lot of phones these days, um, aside from the headphone so, jack, is the SD card slot. Uh, I swear by the SD card, and yeah, it really you just know ticks why, me Simmons? off. Because <laughs> elaborating on Frick, eight hundred dollars for sixty-four gigs, nine hundred dollars for one hundred twenty-eight gigs, nine hundred dollars yeah, for sixty-four, a thousand for one twenty-eight. That is sixty-four gigabytes of flash for one hundred dollars. I can buy an entire SSD, an entire terabyte SSD, for less money than that. Yes, I can buy a bulk pack yeah, and, of SD cards. But it's, just, it's awful. I hate it. And that's the thing, right? Is like when I upgraded to my S8, it has the 64 gig internal storage, but I still use the SD card for my music and my my photos because it's bulk storage that I can just rip out and plug into my computer. Yeah. It makes sense, but we don't have sense these days <laughs> with phones. Yeah, I mean, especially <laughs> the the onboard memory pricing. It's like. It should nowhere near be that that expensive, but like, in terms of how much extra you have to pay to get, you know, sixty four gigs extra, one hundred twenty eight gigs extra, that much, that amount extra has never changed since like the iPhone six days. It's infuriating, and especially when I go to like say reimage my phone, because that's another thing that a lot of people uh, complain about with, uh, oh look how much faster this new phone is versus my phone. Well, if you were to just go in and take the time to re-image your phone, it would be just as good as new again, and you would have that same exact response. Like, I've re-imaged my S8 twice, back up everything onto my SD card, A, and then we're good to go. I've never had to do that. But yet, well, yeah, but you're also in, you're also willing to spend, like, how many thousands of dollars on your iPhone 11, <laughs> so that. <laughs> yeah, but, um... I mean, I will give the Apple products credit. They're they're uh, re-imaging and phone migration software is top notch. But amazing. you know, that is a cute dog. Thank I'm you, Chris. That. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I love them. Okay, that is a cute dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know um, you guys are always biting at the heels for more Threadripper news. Yeah. Yes! I love seeing Threadripper news from this month. 
<laughs> I was going to say AMD news, but then like the word Threadripper came out my mouth and I just kind of went with it. Yeah. So, you know what? I, I for one, am excited for oh, more yeah, Threadripper yeah. news. Yes, Simmons. I wonder if uh, they're going to make another 8-core Threadripper so you can upgrade your 1900X no, but no, not no. get any more cores I, like you don't see, want. See, here's just the thing. Obviously, it's going to be a 16-core. Obviously, the base model is going to be a th uh, 16 core, and I will get that just to spite you, Chris. You. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean, obviously, it's going to be a 16 core? Yeah, I've seen a rumor mill saying that it's starting at 24 core. Uh, oh, wait, wait Allegedly. This... Why would it start at 24 core? None uh, of this makes sense. Because have a 16 core in the form of the 3950X. Yeah, but but that was the, the, the equivalent with the 1900X I purchased, where it was the 8-core 16-thread, yeah, which was the equivalent if you'll of recall, the 1800X. If you'll recall, there was no uh, 2900X, it just started at the 2920X. So Right. I mean... I could see it being the 16-core just to match the deck, uh, the, the, the AM4. Yeah, like it could go either way. I... I don't know. I feel like 24 is a bit too many cores to start with. Oh my yeah. god. The cheapest thread ripper. The cheapest third gen thread ripper chip will have six more cores than Intel's most expensive chip. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, I mean wow. 1624. 162432 seems like what it will be. That kind of seems a bit obvious. Uh, uh, like diminishing well, returns after a certain point, right? I mean, if you from 32 to like 40 or something, how much of an improvement would there be? depends on the you uh, get a program. lot more no frick listen you get a lot more upvotes on reddit that's oh, what it's oh, all about right. ah right you gotta, you gotta realize like when you go into r slash amd and you say hey guys i just bought that 32 core thread ripper you know see new cpu you're gonna get quite a lot it's of not much but it's mine upvotes to the left <laughs> <laughs> you get, when you also post an r slash amd don't forget to set all your rgb to red uh okay. you're, your yes. backlighting, you got to have this like the favorite, like to get extra updates. What you got to do is you got to have like um two computers, you know, one pink and white, and you'd be like XD, that's my girlfriend's. Tee hee, she doesn't <laughs> know much about computers. And then you got to have your one, oh. but like and that's going to take up a lot more room. Like you got to have four monitors. Your girlfriend's going to have like so one seventeen inch monitor. You got to like white push paper. her in the corner and be like assert uh, your PC uh, dominance and just say. <laughs> Here's my thread ripper. You gotta go all out. You might as well just have oh, a, an LED and, desk at that point. <laughs> so, so here's the and here's the other thing that you're forgetting. So, obviously, you need to have the full red background to match yeah. it. Did you guys ever use the Flux uh, software that you could just download and it was like the the blue light filter? Uh, yeah, up until, yeah, before uh, blue light filter. So light. there is a mode in Flux called darkroom mode, and I'm not sure why they made it, except for maybe for the memes. But basically, it inverts the the colors, and then it's all black and red. Ooh. And so you just, you just click that button, and you're good, you, and then you're going to get even more oh, sure. upvotes. It's all you know about the upvotes. You could do just uh, use VGA and unplug the uh, the green and the blue. Yeah, but that takes. Yeah, time. but oh. shut up. You could just damage it. Just keep damaging VGA ports until you get you know just red. Just yeah. magnets. Just use a bunch okay. of magnets on the monitor gotta... until you know eventually you get to the tone you need. Any, anyway, anyway, listen. Like, but I gotta, I gotta keep us grounded here because we're all about the upvotes, and th this next part of the Threadripper news is definitely going to give us the down. Sixty-four cores for two hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, no, wait, 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 wait. no, that would be way too expensive. My name's Adored TV. No, so so the rumor is that Threadripper three is not going to be backwards compatible with X two ninety nine or no, I I X three ninety nine, <gasps> and I know. I know it's offensive and how dare amd do that but i'm not really upset about that personally <laughs> sue is yeah. spitting my face for the last first time. of all first of all simmons grab your pitchforks <laughs> second of all yeah it's all right um i've also seen from the rumor mill that like new thread ripper might have 96 pci express lanes i'm skeptical i, I don't i don't foresee yeah. that <laughs> well i mean it's also maybe going to be split into two platforms like there's a quad channel platform that's going to be like what we have and then there's an eight channel platform that's like single socket epic but unlocked it's it's really up in the um, air there's a whole lot that's not confirmed 
see i uh, for, i don't think that's likely because the the a channel seems like it is just an epic line feature this is the server well, platform here are all your think channels about it think i about don't it more like the uh ow foot cramp think about it more like <laughs> the uh <laughs> the the one unlocks Xeon, the w thirty one seventy five x where it's like uh, this is a Xeon platinum full on minus a multi socket support like all the memory channels all of the uh, PCIe lanes all of the uh, cores all the game cache I mean if if anything it's going to be a one or the other it's going to be yeah, a two quad, it's going to be a quad channel thread ripper or it's going to be an octa channel thread ripper I don't nah. see them supporting both seeing as thread ripper is already a niche product line anyway that only idiots such as myself buy yeah, into. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we'll just go for the Halo products because obviously the ROG Dominus Extreme and the $3,000 Xeon sold. They didn't sell well, I don't yeah. think, but they sold. <laughs> they sold enough. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I just think for simplicity of the, the product line, like, if anything, they'll just do all Octachannel on all Threadripper and it's just available for those who want and it, it could also um, be I, geared towards like i don't know i wonder uh i wonder who would be in the market for that if like high frequency traders would go for that for instance if it's like unlocked buttload of cores i don't think that's the mm -hmm. right kind of chip though they usually go for fewer cores but faster yeah uh, one thing I did want to mention, though, on those speculations of the Threadripper core count, they're based on the um, Epic CPUs. They're trying yes. to correlate the TDP. But there is something worth mentioning that um, TDP, how AMD calculates TDP actually varies almost per product. So Yeah, TDP is going to be like... It's going to be based on the product line more than anything. Like, I mean, if you look at a... Xeon versus i7, i9 Extreme. Like, the TDPs are different, even though it's the uh, same platform and the same silicon. Yeah, it's just with AMD particularly, I know that they yeah. have different variables. So sort of like before it kicks into the next um, boost state, as well as, like, the thermal resistance of the um, the IHS and stuff, that like that changes per product. More specifically, changes per product lineup. So Threadripper, Threadripper versus Epic versus um, Ryzen. That yeah. being said, yeah, I suppose it does line up with the epic things. It's just kind like, of weird. It's like starting at 24 seems a bit um, bold, although AMD does seem to be quite bold lately, if you will. Um, oh, and it, it, I was going to say, if anything, because the 1900X didn't really sell that well anyway for sensible reasons. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if they just target to, uh, the, the CPUs that are actually worth a damn then that that makes a lot more sense from a marketing let me yeah. take a look real quick fast since you mentioned tdp the big list of rome cpus from anantech so if we look at uh, the uh, epic 7200 or i guess 7002 series line we have 225 watt tdp at the very top that is for 64 and 48 and 32 core SKUs. we have 200 watts for each of those core counts below that We've got 155 and 180 watts for a bunch of chips. Like, it's all over the place. This doesn't tell you anything about core counts at all. And it's targeting a different segment entirely. So, yeah, I mean, like TDP, basically I'm TDP doesn't tell you anything about power consumption. It tells you about how the chip is supposed to boost. But that's right. kind of... It's just I mean, something. Yeah. It's honestly something I kind of ignore. I took it. I look at it and go like, take it into consideration with like how hot or how much power it's going to use in its direct comparison to other products. Right. But even then, just as kind of like an advisory. Uh, know, sure, in the same yeah. product I mean, line, but even then, it's not too helpful. Like I got a uh, Core i5 8400T. It is a 35 watt i5. Uh, and yeah. I plugged it into my motherboard, and at stock, my motherboard had multi-core enhancement on and had the power limit set to 4,096 watts, which means it is absolutely not running at 35 watts at all. That's Intel's official yeah. like recommended specification, but the motherboard vendor has overridden that, so that doesn't mean anything. And yes, I mean, I mean, but that's like that'll that's the big thing with yeah. TDP these days, though, right? Like as our as our 
buddy from the chip collective, uh, Napjack27, <laughs> regularly rants about like TDP is a useless number. Well, for how much do we consumer. flex our EPINs if we don't have the TDPs? It's marketing. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, I, I would say it's marketing to an extent. Like, if anything, TDP is only relevant in server space. It is one specification, and it tells you very little. Like, if a if a motherboard vendor were following Intel spec exactly, then yes, my i5 8400T would be using roughly half the power as an equivalent i5 8400, the standard power one. But nobody right. follows Intel spec. So that's the thing. It's like Intel is advertising this number, and according to their specifications, this is how it should work. It's just that the third parties who are supporting it don't do that. I think Supermicro uh, tends to support like Intel spec pretty well, and Intel obviously does in like, the NUCs and whatnot. And uh, a lot of mobile products do because, well, power consumption actually matters. But like desktop stuff, eh, nobody cares. Turn everything yeah, on that, so your motherboard you, benchmarks the best as if the motherboard means anything. Going back to my point, you mentioned Supermicro, and Supermicro is primarily designing for yeah, like server workstation class systems and servers. So the TDP makes oh, sense shoot, in that kind right. of workload. I accidentally supported your point. We can't have that. <laughs> 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 yeah. Isn't it just the words? Yes. Well, depends sometimes. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. So um, have you seen the PCIe 5 is being oh, demoed we're now? All right, next article. <laughs> <laughs> In case we weren't aware. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, yeah, we're done article. with you and your TDP. So, yeah. see, it, yes. Before we go into the details on PCIe 5, I, I really appreciate that we're already seeing PCIe 5 uh, specifications coming out, and yet PCIe 4 isn't even really adopted yet. <laughs> Keep in mind, uh, <laughs> PCIe 4, number one, the spec came out actually fairly late. Like, it was delayed for a couple of years for really dumb reasons. Uh, and number two, yeah. it is around for networking hardware, specifically for IBM's Power 9 platform, which is like the only thing that supported it for several years now. I think uh, Power 9 came out in 2015. Hang on, um, let me check. Was it going to be like the new standard? Like, Because I, I always thought 2016. if you're going to a whole new sort of like setup like PCIe 5, there has to be some, I mean, some sort of improvement, right? So what's the improvement? Uh, double the data rate as per usual. Mm. Is this the last one on copper? Uh, cool. PCIe 6 is in the work. Uh, version 0 0.3 was uh, finalized, or I guess the version 0.3 was reached in development. Uh, I'm not sure if they have confirmed copper yet. Hang hmm. on. Uh, I mean, honestly, the future of, of these high dan uh, data transfer speeds is going to be uh, optical oh, anyway. No. So it's, it makes uh, sense. I think it is supposed to be using copper because uh, Anantech really? on the PCIe 6 article says uh, that specification, which is expected to be finished in 2021, will once again double PCIe's bandwidth um, thanks to some high end encoding technologies like PAM4. Uh, PAM4, what does that stand for again? Um, uh, pulse, um, ampl pulse amplitude modulation with four levels. Mm. Uh, I think that is inherently a copper thing. I don't think, I don't think optical can do that. I don't. I don't think so. Yeah, because once you said yeah. pulse, you're now in the electrical realm. Well, hmm. electrical pulse. I mean, I think PCIe five is also using PAM four. So is PCIe yeah, Gen five doing? It says here thirty two. Yeah, you get transfers per transfers. second. Transfers. That's the one. Right. Yeah, um, so I, I didn't <laughs> want to say like I was like G T. Yeah. Uh, no, I had to get clarification earlier as well. Yeah, the reason <laughs> they use transfer is because like, for example, uh, DDR memory it's double data rate, so the actual bus might be two thousand megahertz, but the data rate is four thousand mega transfers. So that's why they use that. It just like it simplifies uh, any ambiguity with like people saying hertz when they mean rate. Right. The transfer right. so much cooler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It really does sound cooler. So this is 32, so 4 then is obviously 16, then 3, which is what we've basically been on for quite a while yeah. now, is 8. Yes. Um, right. Any reason to go to 16? 
I mean, I remember when 3 came out, people were like, oh, thank God I'm on PCIe 3. I'm getting all the FPSs. <laughs> uh, so the, the big justification I'm seeing for, for the higher transfer rates, like uh, Chris mentioned earlier, obviously networking uh, can utilize it. The SSD but, um, potential. Yeah, yeah, well, that, that was what I was going to get yes. to. Okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, so once you start getting into like the server space and then you have these uh, large uh, HBAs or post bus adapters just jammed packed with SSDs, this allows for uh, more optimal bandwidth utilization yeah. uh, when you're hitting multiple NVMe drives at the same time. We're talking time. a terabyte a second, right? Oh, oh easily. Perfect. So. But surely in that scenario, they're not really connected to it. Wouldn't it be like a SAS drive? What do you mean? Well, okay, but yes, but, but that's a perfect justification because if you're looking at SAS, that's your networking as well as your storage. So you have a look at a data center environment where you have maybe hundreds of servers hitting the same uh, SAN or network attached storage or whatever, and then they're all... Uh, either uploading large amounts of files or pulling large amounts of files, and you have your 10 gigabit uh, per second networking speed hitting a large SAN array of gigabit. NVMe drives. Oh, wait. Well, I mean, I, I, I say gig just because that's like the, the, the bog standard for the data yeah. center. So you can essentially have moment. basically more drives per PCIe lane, if you will. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, because consider your HBAs, it's just a way to connect multiple drives on shared PCIe lane. Uh, so you keep it increasing this, uh, this throughput exponentially, you, like, mm. going from 32 gig transfers to 64 gig transfers on PCIe 6. Uh, you can just hit more drives on the exact same lanes that much so faster. Are you telling me that these people are not spending all this money to give me extra FPSs for free? Oh, it's yes, not because free. your FPSs are clearly <laughs> ba based on your SSD bottleneck. That's know, what I, the I problem is here. Sorry, I, I, was, I was more meant like um, people saying that, you know, uh, that PCIe essentially is the bottleneck for creating um, for extra FPSs in games with graphics cards. Yes, <laughs> people don't oh, say that. God, yeah. They still well, did. because clearly well, HBM showed its prowess no, uh, when that what was so it? AMD. Oh, USB three point is too slow. That's why I missed that headshot in CS:GO. Like, come on. <laughs> no, like back mm -hmm. in July, I mean AMD showed off. It's like, look, PCIe four is two times as good with this graphics card as PCIe three, and it was some um, like convoluted scenario where it was like the GPU was accessing the host system's memory. It's like. No, that's <laughs> what VRAM is for. Stop doing this. I don't remember what it was exactly, but it was so convoluted and it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, like like the the the, the benefits we're getting from PCI Gen 5 and PCI well, even PCI Gen 4 for that matter, is not going to be realized in the the Uber Elite gamer market until uh you know faster our games are more reliant on that transfer speed from memory I think, um, on the graphics card. I think card. PCIe Gen 5 has a couple of uses, and I really hope I'm right on this one. So, like, imagine if Intel upgrades to, like, DMI5, and they just have the Southbridge embedded into the CPU package, kind of like their mobile chips. Could you clarify what DMI5 uh, So DMI is. is, like, Intel's proprietary link between the CPU and the Southbridge. Mm -hmm. But oh, okay, it's yeah. effectively PCI Express. Like, I think it's stripped down PCI Express based on my understanding of the standard. Um, so, obviously, if they went to DMI 5, it would be based on PCI Express 5. Um, but, like, if they could have that embedded in, the, in uh, the CPU package or something where, you know, motherboards aren't really an issue then that would be really cool because now you have like a buttload more bandwidth to the chipset. You can run multiple NVMe drives and they don't get bottlenecked. You can have like tons of USB 3 or tons of SATA or something and it's not bottlenecked because uh, that's really Intel's major downside with their South Bridges right now, AMD to a lesser extent. Um, and then what's the other thing? I mean, yeah, like really that's about it because if you look at consumer systems, number one, they're not really going to benefit overall, but it's going to be detrimental because it's just going to be so expensive. Like PCI Express 3, fine, quadruple the data rate, 
now you're dealing with like oh we've got to have much tighter tolerances for this like remember uh amd was talking well maybe we can uh we can like backport pci express uh for support to um uh, like x370 x470 but that didn't happen because the boards just weren't within spec so they couldn't handle it like it's really expensive and it's going to get more expensive for this to be done. So I suspect that this is going to be relegated to like server stuff where they need 100 or 400 gig ethernet. So Frick Frock, I have, a, I have a question for you, Frick Frock. Yes. Do you like mechanical keyboards? I love the clickety click. Do you like the, um, the tactile feel, but do you hate the, uh, the distance you have to travel. Thank you, Chris, oh. for the sound effects. Bane mm -hmm. of my, the distance is the bane of my existence. Yeah. So, right. Did you, that rhymed. Exactly. Frick is the master of words. Any words that come out of his mouth are like liquid Chinese jelly. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, please explain. <laughs> um, like, like no, we will you know, not. Little jelly things at like the Chinatown, like come in a little, that little jar, like you peel off the top and you. Yeah, and you don't. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not know those? <laughs> no, I don't. And then you gotta, you gotta like look really, you gotta try really hard to not make it look very, um, you know, weird, shall I say. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway <laughs> you gotta give yeah so <laughs> razor is announcing or um demoing its first optical keyboard for use in laptops essentially oh. it's going to have a one millimeter of travel and an infrared oh, wow. like sort of light beam that's going to detect i assume it's going to be interrupt um yeah. and it's going to have 55 grams of actuation force which is the same as an mx blue key they are claiming um, it has the same, it has 50% more key travel while retaining a satisfying mechanical tactile click. I was going to say, isn't the, the tactile feel just bottoming out at a 1 mil travel? Yes. 1.7 mil travel. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah, the actuation point is 1 mil, and then it's got an entire travel of 1.7 mil. How uh, is this okay, laptop so going to be? Holy crap. <laughs> So, so, so I gotta say, I'm I'm a little disappointed, not in the technology because it sounds really fascinating. Chick uh, keyboards have been very lackluster in the past several yeah, years. Their existence. Uh, is thank terrible. you, Mi thank you, Microsoft, for actually giving us uh, decent keyboards on the Surface Book. But um, one of the things that I first heard about with these optical keyboards was a, like two or three years ago, I think, when if somebody was investigating a or trying to develop an analog keyboard where it was essentially a linear uh, key switch similar to like a cherry mx red but using the optical sensor there was actually like multiple like activation points going down to give you that analog experience uh that uh, many gamers have been missing on their keyboard and mouse uh. Uh, oh, I bet you play. do that with like um, a wedge, just like um, a translucent wedge, where like as you press it down, it uh, it blocks more and more of the light. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, uh, I I feel like that's what it was, but but regardless, um, I hope this uh, that this development of this type of keyboard it also just encourages the development of this tech, um, because I think it's really cool. Yeah, uh, my big. Yeah. My biggest other concern is what happens when the sensor gets dirty. Yes, that's what I was about to say. Like, so the other day <laughs> I spilled um, 750 milliliters of water on my keyboard because yep, I, I am too cheap to replace my water bottle with a big out dent. <laughs> so yeah, I have a water bottle that's made out of metal. There's a big out dent in the bottom, so it wobbles a lot. Um, <laughs> I filled my water bottle, put it next to my desk, and walked away. And then I heard, dunk, and I was like, oh, God, no. <laughs> and there's just water see, see. all over my keyboard. So wait, 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 wait. hang on, hang on. <laughs> Alex, the dent yes. is coming out the bottom. Yes. So okay, what happened here's is... Here's what you do. No, 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 I don't care. <sighs> here's what you do. You take the water bottle, you flip it upside down, you take a hammer, and you smash the dent back inside the bottle. The bottle no. <laughs> No, 
That will fix your problem, Alex. Really? <laughs> Trust me, I'm a doctor. I mean, it probably would. Anyway, that's not relevant. <laughs> what is relevant is the fact that I managed to unplug my keyboard quickly, um, dried it off, hair dried it, and put it back together. It's just magically it fine. Yes. Um, I wonder with these optical sensors if that would have been the case, or I wonder with just the amount of sort of gamer gunk that can get in oh, people's gamer keyboards. <laughs> How well uh, it we, we, I don't know if we can say that anymore. Isn't that a trademark product? Uh, <laughs> Hello, yes. One model of please. How are you? <laughs> Fine, I don't think they'd be listening anyway. So <laughs> we're good. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, um, I assume this is in its housing of its own. But even then, I don't know. It seems also quite expensive to replace. Like, I'm not saying it's a bad tech, it just I tend to be very pessimistic with this kind of stuff, especially with laptops, which I have a Surface Book. It is quote unquote the best feeling keyboard. It still feels like a, it still feels like a laptop keyboard. I still don't like it. Like, <laughs> uh, like honestly, the thing I don't like with key, I just don't like chiclet keyboards. And do you remember yeah. the, the cheap generic standard keyboard that hand out in offices and stuff was that HP oh. or Dell keyboard? It was like long yeah. travel. Uh, membrane keys i am yeah. no, no honestly i much much prefer that to a chiclet keyboard yes. the new ones i mean that, like they hand out the dell whatever's that are like i don't know half a centimeter thick oh. and you press it and the whole thing bends inwards <laughs> i hate that <laughs> see I, I i people will think i'm lying when i tell them that like one of my favorite just disposable keyboards to use was a two dollar dell keyboard circa 2004 oh, brilliant that had the that it, it was a rubber dome keyboard, but it did not feel mushy. It did not feel gross. It, you could uh, bludgeon somebody with it softly. Nice. I mean, it's, 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 it, and I got it for $2. Yeah, so yeah. so, so, I need a fuck over $10 right now on eBay. If Sorry. you really want something like that. How much was it for? No, I, I, uh, less than 10 bucks. Yeah, but what I don't like is the budget keyboard anymore isn't like acceptable. If you. <laughs> It's spongy. It's awful. <laughs> because you got yeah. used to And then the cool other stuff. issue with a lot of like the, the Chico keyboards is just, you know, humans naturally shed hair, skin follicles, etc. What happens to in follicles? <laughs> you don't know how much I shed. Also, also sorry, um, Chris, you said <laughs> I got used to the good keyboards. Yeah, you got used to cool um, mechanical keyboards. No. Well, yes, but no, because um, at work, like I, I use a mechanical keyboard now, like I've been using it for a really long time. Yeah. But at work, I purposefully went and for, found one of those old HP keyboards that no one was using uh -huh. instead of the yeah. stupid chiclet things because, well. Oh, well, yeah, I nicer. mean like chiclet versus rubber dome, but I mean like rubber dome versus rubber dome. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. what I'm saying is like ru the rubber dome, old HP, whatever keyboards I find way nicer than the current modern standard of budget keyboards, which is, ooh, we're I mean, trying to copy Apple, chiclet, flat, it's cool, we're well, hip. I would go a step beyond that because I purchased a Corsair K55 or a K40 or something mm -hmm. like that, rubber dome keyboard, and it was for uh, my girlfriend and it was for her computer. And the rubber domes on that thing are just the spongiest, grossest rubber domes I've ever used. I don't know what changed between, say, like mid two thousands versus circa current year, yeah, and it's current year. why why these modern rubber dome keyboards are just garbage. Have they got more <laughs> expensive? Probably. Uh, I mean, yeah, but but that's just inflation for you. <laughs> uh, maybe, because I kind of remember like the old, I don't know why, I, I, HP is just stuck in my mind, but those old HP keyboards being like, honestly, $5 new. Yeah. And yeah, I find these new ones are still like 20 bucks. Yeah, I don't it's, know. no, they're just driving margins up as far as they can. Realistically, I'm sure you can get like $5 keyboards off of aliexpress or something oh yeah and they're probably really good it'll be like uh that one microsoft mouse that everybody loved frick i'm sure you know the one i'm talking about oh are you talking about the uh the, uh, 
But the MX probably. Master? It was the the one that Mr. Bill Gates designed himself. Apparently, if you go into the mouse section of several forums. <laughs> <laughs> one particular form that I know one you're particular. referencing, but we're not, uh, not allowed to mention. <laughs> we, we, we don't talk yeah, about for that for legal least. reasons. I don't think uh, that's it. Actually, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it was. Um... Cut that bit out? <laughs> nope. Oh, anyway, okay. oh that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, can't yeah. remember the name of it, but there's a million fake. Oh. Words. Um, the 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 roller balls of latter day <laughs> uh no, I, uh, no. Intelli mouse that was it <laughs> that's the one ah uh, that's the one i still think the mx master is like or the logitech uh, uh, mx master is like one of the best that's not, just general that's not microsoft uses. i specifically i said i i clarified to logitech i i realized what i said he has a mouth i so, actually want to hit you in real life right now but i can't Please no, do. Stop. No, stop. No, he's we, too far no. away. We do not condone violence. Stop. <laughs> no, okay. No, here's what we're going to do. Simmons, I'm going to build a device and you're going to plug it into your computer. And when I send you a signal over the internet, it will punch you in the face. <laughs> I'm down. Can I, can I actually help uh, pay I for this? I will also build one for myself so you can do the same. All right, yeah. this sounds great. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, speaking That's of games, a future project that will be completed in a, like a year. I think any of these things are legal no. that you're talking about. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. No, no, it's fine if we both yeah, you just punch people on the internet. I, I think that there's probably some like Geneva Convention against that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, okay. So speaking of games, I know there's a game that both uh, Chris and I here are genuinely excited for this uh, rumored announcement. But apparently, Planet, Planet Side Man! Three is now in development like, and has been and for a long time. Like Planet Side Simmons. What, wait, what? What's the Planet Side. Planet Side. Um, or, or I'll refer to Planet Side Two specifically because that was the one that I have dumped multiple hours into, multiple hundred hours into. Planet Side Two is the closest thing I can come to to an MMO first-person shooter. Uh, basically, at least on Planet Side Two, you have three major factions. You can uh, you join squads or platoons. And you go into these multi-hundred user battles coordinated by these large platoons. And it's a large territory acquisition game. The objective is to basically landlock out uh, the other factions at their warp gate or their home base. And the team that is able to do that successfully conquers the continent. That sounds and then they have really boring. I'm sorry, Simmons. OK, so basically in Planet Side 2, the one faction that you want to join is the NC. Uh, they're Space America. <laughs> well, they, you're wrong. No, shut up. Space America <laughs> gets cool rail guns and they shoot the Planet Mans and they have a big tank that sh that has like a really big gun. And like that, that's kind of their thing. They have really big guns. Uh, they also have shotguns. You can unlock a shotgun with an underbarrel shotgun, which is funny. Uh, <laughs> and you just go around and you shoot mans. Uh, my most frequently played class is Light Assault because Light Assault has a jetpack. So you can just fly up to a roof sh uh, rooftop and just start shooting people in the head. And it's funny because half the time they don't know to look for you. Great game. 10 out of 10. Highly recommend it. So, do, you know, do, you know what's, sorry, so, do you know what's kind of funny? It's like the way you two guys describe that. It. It's like <laughs> someone's kid describing a game versus someone's dad <laughs> describing the game. <laughs> Yeah, that's a pretty. I just good want comparison. to be Space America and shoot the Planet Man's. <laughs> so, so one of the my biggest takeaways from this game, though, was um, one of the, the big proponents that they unfortunately ruined after one of the major updates was uh, you would spawn in at the warp gate, you could join a platoon that was just like recruiting at the warp gate, and then you c would move out as essentially a forty man army to a designated location, um, and. Uh, the one of like from a technical perspective, because of how large the game was, I used to play on the West Coast server of America, God, uh, even though I'm based on the East Coast. Yeah, Emerald's and uh, well, well, you're wrong. But <laughs> uh, kidding, and I, I regularly had 150 millisecond to 300 millisecond latency. But the the server uh, uh, 
prediction for you know bullets, uh, bullets being fired, uh, people moving was really yeah, good. Yeah, it's all done client side. There is a reason that like people uh, people call it client side as a joke, not just because it sounds like planet side. So yeah, that's. But but even oh, then, yeah. like I, I regularly checked in on the network utilization of the game, and it was minimal. Oh yeah, no, like it's best. really good. Like, God, uh, last year I was reading an article about how like your network is really important for video games, and it's like, oh yeah, man, PC is way better than consoles because you can get ten gigabit Ethernet, and that helps your gaming. <laughs> and it's like, okay, let's just let's just put aside all of the issues with like the fact that you don't have ten gig internet. No. <laughs> He lives Planet in Shadow side. <laughs> Planet side uses like one or two megabits per second, I think. Not even that, maybe. No, not even that. It's like maybe like 400K. Yeah, it's ridiculously lightweight <laughs> for what it is, which is hundreds of players, lots of vehicles, and lots of bullets in the air. And these aren't just like hit scan weapons. These are actually... Uh, they they have bullet drop and they have travel time Trajectory. like these are yeah that's the one mm -hmm. yeah yeah like i would I, I used to run the sniper class and if you had the the 50 cal sniper rifle uh you could hit people in the in-game equivalent of a kilometer and a half yeah. away if yeah. you could account for the bullet the you, easiest mm -hmm. way sorry just quickly i think the easiest way to say it is i played planet side 2 when i was in south africa and i didn't notice any latency well i didn't notice latency but i didn't it, notice it to be bad um and then another thing i wanted to mention is like the continent sizes i mean you're looking at close to skyrim size continents so it's like you 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 have a very large map if you don't like this battle you go to a different battle and there was two continents that were always active. So if this one was too crowded for your playstyle, you went to the other one. And you could still... Unfortunately, anyway. there are fewer big battles as the player count has died off. I think uh, the continent sizes are about uh, six by six kilometers. So it's like it's right. like 36 square kilometers times four continents. And I think they're adding a fifth one. I haven't played it for about a year, though. I need to. Sure. Um so needless to say, Chris and I are very excited for Planet yeah, Side. I definitely want to play this it, as well. So, Simmons, do you know when Planet Side Three has been announced for? Um, I mean, right now the rumors are either late 2020 at the absolute soonest. I'm not optimistic on that because they're still actively supporting Planet Side Two also, and their Planet yeah, Side Arena that game just came out. So. Uh, so I would say 2021 is an op, uh, like an op, uh, what's the word I'm looking Optimal for to my deal? No, an enthusiastic, Optimistic. uh, that's the game. word. Optimistic. Thank you. That's, uh, okay. So planet side uh, two came out in November, 2012 and planet side one came out in May, 2003. So that's like nine and a half years between them. So what's nine and a half years, like 2021 then at that yeah. same rate at that same pace. And I'm really curious as to how the, the game development's actually going to go because a lot of Planet Side 1 players really disliked Planet Side 2 because it was a very drastic shift in how gameplay yeah. worked. People yeah. who were new to Planet Side 2 really liked Planet Side 2. People who played Planet Side 1 religiously couldn't stand it. I, I would say it was a really similar thing to like Tribes Ascend when oh, that please, came out. Oh, please, let's not talk That just makes me sad. Dude. Tribes Ascend is still my favorite oh, first-person shooter of all time. Could have been. <laughs> Do you want to elaborate on that? I'm not actually certain what Tribes Ascend so, was. So Tribes Ascend it was a Twitch shooter. Um, the big gimmick Why not for a it, though shooter? is. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> the big. <laughs> so, so the big gimmick was all of your classes had jetpacks, but you had a, a toggleable thing called skis and basically it made you frictionless all the maps were designed with hills and they were very fluid maps all your weapons with the exception of some of the assault rifles were projectile based so your projectile based weapons would inherit your velocity as you were moving <laughs> the nice. primary you can shoot they your actually... bullets harder when you go fast well, so so just as a, a quick aside, like one, uh, for the Pathfinder class, which was the fastest, lightest weight class, uh, they released a spin fuser, which was the no bullet drop, for, uh, straight firing projectile explosive um, that basically 100% inherited your velocity. 
So it made it that much more challenging to hit your targets if you were moving at 200k. But <laughs> uh, the primary game mode that everybody played was uh, Capture the Flag. And I, the highlight event for that was back in 2013, uh, which was the 4chan V versus Reddit, where the 4chan team uh, basically dropped off right before the event. They scrambled together and they still beat the Reddit team who was training for two uh, weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that was that was that was so much fun that to watch. That is exactly what I would expect. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, 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 no, but it was funny because uh, they lost the first three, like two rounds out of seven. They won the next one. They lost the next one. And they proceeded to win the, the remaining games because the team just clicked. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and what happened to it uh, was the high res, the company that developed it and did you know all the marketing for it was. Deciding to jump into the hero market. Oh, tell them about paladins. Why don't you, Simmons? Um, I don't want to talk, talk about, paladins. about paladins. I'll let you do paladins it. Paladins <laughs> is the reason Tribe to send uh, See, here's the thing, Frick. And the reason why I don't want to talk about it is because I can't talk about it. I will quite literally block that from my memory. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, if I remember, it was a hero shooter. Paladins. And it was just... It was just a craft show. Isn't, what, Paladins? Isn't it just a general kind of copy game? Yeah, that's what I it was. Remember. I did mean, there was nothing special League about of it. Legends, or oh, did it? Oh, yeah, yeah, it copied League of Legends. I can't, I, yeah, and, and went to the Battle Royale mode. And, and oh, the, yeah. the problem with Paladins, <laughs> like, like, that was so dumb. The, uh, like, the developer basically shifted their entire plant. Uh, no, it's not plant side. No, their the entire tribe staff over to that. So there was like two guys who are maintaining tribes ascend up until like last year, I think. And then they put out a big update stating, "Yep, the source code is out. Have at it, boys." <laughs> and there's like I know uh, there's still an Australian tribes ascend community, still a North American tribes ascend community. Uh, they have modified clients, so you can. So once you log in, you authenticate through their login servers, and it's all coordinated in house. Um, and they still are regularly doing events. I think even today, I got a notification about an event they were doing today on the Australian you know, server. They so. also, uh, I mean, High Res coming out does all the development. They also moved a lot of their stuff onto an MMO called Smite. Yeah, oh, I yeah, quite a few. Oh, people, like, yeah. Uh, no, no, it wasn't an MMO. That was a MOBA. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> God, uh, I remember. Uh, I remember seeing Spite. Like my brother was playing it, and it's just like, oh, here's like ten different cultures, uh, like mythologies, compressed into this one game. It, yeah, I mean what? that's kind of what. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I mean Paladins is a copy of Overwatch. Um, Smite was the. Yeah. heavily influenced by the MOBA popularity of Dota and League of Legends at the time. But it was a different See, camera I, view, if I remember correctly. It was more third person. Yeah, I wanted to uh, like over Smite the back, third person. Because I do appreciate the MOBA play style. I do not appreciate the MOBAs that exist in current year. <laughs> um, and I wanted to like Smite, but I just never had so an opportunity to get into as it. As someone... Oh, God. Unfortunately, I've played a lot of League of Legends, and it was because... <laughs> I think the reason everyone else plays it is kind of like your friends were playing it. The thing that frustrated me a lot about League of Legends was the fact that um, there's just so much time and money, and mm -hmm. you don't have to spend money, but it's like this weird advertising. If you don't, to, get no, there's no advantage to it at all. But like, it's very sort of like almost peer pressure-y type vibe with skins and this. And yeah, that that's how they get your money. Um, and it's very, I don't know, it's very bad, the community. <laughs> the community really? is, <laughs> is <laughs> so toxic. I know it's a joke, like as in terms of like it's a meme, how toxic the League of Legends community is. But it's it, it also like whether or not you kind of overall had a net positive fun experience or whether or not you were good at it or even slightly enjoyed it it just wasn't positive for me to play that yeah. game because it's just it's not mentally good for your psyche this <laughs> the amount of no. toxicity in there is just it 
gets you to kind of see it as a normal thing until you kind of stop see the way- for like a year and look back and go, whoa. Yeah, see, the the way the game was always sold to me is if you want any chance of getting it into it these days is you need a dedicated group of players to play with to just block out the toxicity. Yeah, but it's one of the few games it, where it's like, one of the best tips to start laddering is to mute everyone and ignore everyone. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like, what? I came, yeah. <laughs> so it was kind of, it was a big paradigm shift for me because I came from StarCraft Two Wings of Liberty, which was like, very very yeah. very friendly like that's the kind of game where you could absolutely destroy someone in a one-on-one and they'd be like can you teach me how to do that that was awesome <laughs> yeah you know it was very different so yeah the toxicity was a lot for, uh more sparse in that and game, even if for it sure was, i'm it really was really funny because the best thing in the world was having a really toxic enemy and then you just beating them into the ground yeah, that's <laughs> just, funny Oh yeah, it, I've always preferred that kind of one-on-one game when it's a strategy type thing. And League of Legends or MOBA is a strategy game. So, yeah, I just didn't like the team strategy aspect of it. When it's much more <laughs> skewed towards FPS reaction times with less strategy like Overwatch, then the team aspect I prefer. Well, I got good news for you, Alex, because Riot, the people that make League of Legends, just announced oh, a new like FPS it. game. No, I know, and... I don't like it. It's a combination I of them. Like I don't trust the, no, I don't trust them to make a good game. They, they <laughs> make the most money out of any game publisher by doing nothing. What do you think they're going to do with their new games? They're obviously worried that their IP is going to die off and lose the money, so they're just going to try and shove it into other aspects. League of Legends it 2. It will never, ever, 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 ever die. It's just like it's not going to happen. It might get less popular, but it will never die. People said that about StarCraft. And people still play StarCraft. They do, but actually, I think people more people play it now. Like, I kind of want to get back into it, but I don't think I'll be as good as I was, and that'll upset me. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> no matter how but, good you are, yeah. there's always someone better than you. No, I know, but it, at least, like, I don't know. I prefer kind of games like um, some racing games where you can have fun along the way. They announced, but, uh, they announced a card game, Le- Le- Legends of Ruterra, and the FPS is called Project A, which is a uh, five versus five. It's going to be an eSport, apparently, like everything is. Uh, Project A is a oh, yeah, because... character-based tactical shooter, which combines League of Legends characters in a near-future Earth setting. And they announced a fighting game, Project L. Jesus Christ. How many things so... are League of Legends people working on? Wait, was Maybe. it Project L? L. Is, yeah. this a, is this a prequel to Project M? Oh, God. <laughs> so, um, I oh, will shoot, say... Oh, shit, Nintendo's going to kill us? No, no, no. As I've gotten older, I honestly, <laughs> honestly, really just want to buy a Nintendo Switch. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just caring a lot less about those competitive games. Yes. Yeah. So you got to... Yeah. When you're in that sort of mindset where you're always focusing on like competition and stuff like that, unless that's like your job and you have to, because it's like that in the fighting game community too. Like a mm. new game along, like right now, the biggest game on the fighting game circuit is Tekken 7. Biggest game. Oh, still- um, but if you want to get into fighting games, what you have to do is either if you want to make money, you got to play the most popular game. And maybe the most popular game isn't the game that you like playing. See what I'm saying? No, 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 of course, of course, but I don't have to make that choice, so. Yeah, exactly. So, I'm just saying, as I've gotten older, I don't care about, you know, being as, I don't care about the competitive nature of it, I don't care about getting to Diamond Rank or Masters League or whatever like that, right? I I just care much more about having a game I can pick up and put down quickly, and that is very easy, but rewarding. Like, it doesn't need to be... Well, clearly, yeah. you don't get into Rocket League. No, I don't like Rocket League. Rocket League gets sorry, into you. Sorry, No, sorry. I know there's a big <laughs> following for Rocket League, but I think the controls are absolutely horrifically designed. Like, a three-year-old designed the controls of Rocket League. I, I disagree. Like, it, it was, it's been super natural. So, so, <laughs> the, oh, the one Wait. genre of game I very, very much hate is the genre of game where... You have to overcome the controls. 
Like some games yeah. take it to a funny aspect, like um, Human Fall Flat. I'm completely fine with Human Fall Flat because <laughs> all you do is you play with a bunch of friends and you just struggle through that. All the controls and it's hilarious, right? That's fine. Do really you like? That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That as well. But like when it's in a competitive nature or you're trying to get to a goal competitively and the biggest barrier is the controls are absolutely feel like you're just i don't know you know <laughs> feels like you're just completely drunk while trying to control a plane with one of those old joysticks that's like one centimeter tall <laughs> it's yeah i don't like that style of game basically I'm also this same kind of person that I think tutorials should never really do this, then do this, then do this. It should be very natural and flowing that you kind of find out by yourself, which does lead to me skipping a lot of tutorials and then going, <laughs> what, what is going on? I didn't read anything. <laughs> yeah, that's self-inflicted, you turkey. No, I know it's self-inflicted, but at the same time, I, there have been some games where it's very much like it plonks you in the world and it, it doesn't have a ridiculous amount of exposition it doesn't have a lot of like stupid fetch quests like now press x as you can see x makes you jump oh yeah oh yeah that stuff yeah. it's like well yes i could go through that for 30 minutes and i would learn all the controls it's boring. yeah it's like it's assume awful. that your players have played a video game before like Yo, I thanks think, yeah right. i think i mean i haven't played many nintendo games recently but so oh god dude pokemon has gotten so bad about that like oh, the entire first yeah, island in a uh, sun and moon is just a tutorial like whole damn thing it's so yeah. bad it's like two like, or three oh, hours until you get to uh until that. you get like freedom whereas with like red and blue it's like ah well so i've had my coffee here's how you catch a pokemon bye yeah like <laughs> Well, uh, did, did you see the big announcement with Sword and Shield? Mm -hmm. uh, no. So. Which is that, that they are giving us the option to skip the tutorial. Thank Jesus. Yeah. Oh, God, they've gotten it's, so bad. The tutorial, it's like so how painful. complicated is it to walk around, catch Pokemon, and train them? Like how difficult is it? Well, but that's the thing, right? Is like most of the people who've been playing Pokemon have been playing it for and years. And most of the kids so it's can about... pick it up the way I did back in my day, uphill, both ways, in the <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you younger Shut than up, me? Simmons. <laughs> you learn to breed the Pikachus, don't you know? Yeah, right. That was a feature. I mean, I got a feature in one of the Pokemon games I played. I think it was like gold or something. You have to get these two Pokemon and like make a mate in this pen. It was really no, weird. Oh, yeah. No, Frick. The they don't mate. They don't know where the egg came from. It could have come from a stork. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they just found it. It's like, I don't want to play the scene. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I feel like that is going away a lot. Kind of those intuitive um, tutorials i think neo automata had a very intuitive tutorial i.e it didn't have a tutorial um what else spyro didn't have a tutorial the remake i've uh, been playing that well i haven't been playing that i finished it a while ago that was really actually easy it kind of just plonks you in and it's like go yeah it's but like just it's a remake so they kind of copied what they did in the first game Give me some NPCs who I can optionally interact with who will, like, tell me things about the game if you must. Otherwise, just, like, give me an easy level that teaches me how to do things. Yeah, exactly. Like, like give, just, give me the chance to make mistakes. So it's like, oh, that's what that does. Or it's like, oh, that's how I get out of this sticky situation or something. Just, yeah. Or just take the Dark Souls approach. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was fine Never with Dark it. Souls. Yeah, it was not so bad. Um... The most annoying bit about Dark Souls for me wasn't like the the fighting or anything like that. It was the wandering around looking for specific items. That's I didn't enjoy that. Explore. Yeah, but it's yeah, running back and forth between the same places got boring. <laughs> lore, Alex, it's lore. Lore. <laughs> it's world building. How else anyway. are they supposed to get thirty hours of gameplay? It was good though. Like the atmosphere was very good. I'm. I'm I don't know if I'm unique but I the things I like a lot in games movies any kind of genre soundtrack matters a lot to me oh yeah as Music well as good. um sort of 
It's not necessarily graphics, like Neo Automata does not look good, but the soundtrack is just mind-blowingly good. And the overall sort of um, atmosphere and world building they have is very good. So yeah, that it's all about in... it's all about style and like music style, but really also... helps with uh, music really helps with the atmosphere like uh, Halo 3 ODST. It's like this noir esque uh, detective story in the Halo universe and like the main city. And it's got this really lonely soundtrack to go with it. Like it's do you know really what good. actually. Yeah. Do you know what else works really well? A Hat in Time. That's a new platformer. Hat Kid. I'm sure everyone's seen that. Yeah, I like hats. Mm. <laughs> I absolutely love that platformer because the soundtrack is brilliant. It kind of flows with the uh, game. There's no crazy tutorial. Very vibrant and colorful. The shading is really, really good. And it like obviously it's a cartoon style, but the shading works so well. Same as Neil Automata. It's called Indivisible, and it has a gorgeous art style to it. It's really, really pretty. I, I will, I guess. Indivisible. That's, that's the name. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's games that's like awesome that. awesome is eating a sandwich. Okay. Really? I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting distracted. He's, he's eating a sandwich. Alex, throw that, throw that in, the, in the video. No. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> video? So, have, have you guys... Um, have you guys ever gone to sort of Taco Bell? And no. uh, Chris, don't lie to me. I know you've gone to Taco Bell. I have never gone to Taco Bell and I don't plan okay. on it. Okay, cool. So Chris, when you're going to Taco Bell, have you ever thought, hmm, I really want some Baja Blast. Oh, some, God. Some, yes! some nice tacos, <laughs> some taco takeaways, mm. some, some cheese and Mexican burritos. But Jeez, I also want some what now? <laughs> <laughs> but I also want an Xbox controller to get all my Baruto grease on. <laughs> Don't forget about your Doritos Locos take uh, a controller my, in its natural habitat. My Doritos. Yeah, my Doritos, my Burritos, and my Takos. And I want to put them all on my X Bone controller. Your guacamole. Well, now you can. There's an Xbox One X Eclipse oh. limited edition console bundle at taco bell oh god so yeah. is wait is the console oh okay no i was gonna say is this like a taco bell branded console because i don't want that <laughs> it is when you press <laughs> you what's your problem when you buddy? Buy the console, it makes a the taco bell dong sound <laughs> <laughs> the actual Taco Bell. <laughs> no, no, it actually does that. They made a video. Actually, <laughs> oh, Taco gosh. Bell is the bell. The entire tower is... <laughs> uh, to reduce the confusion, basically, you purchase a special double chapula. Chapula? Chapula? Chalupa. 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 <laughs> not a real anyway. You're, fine. You're not even reading the letters in the right order. <laughs> Ch Chapelo? It's, it's a reading disorder, Chris. Oh my Come god, now. what? Included in the bundle is an Xbox One X Eclipse Limited Edition console, which includes the Taco oh. Bell ring sound when switched on. God <laughs> damn it. Chris, Chris, Chris this is I hate before. this. I don't this want it. Chris, this has happened before where I'm trying to build up to explaining the story. And you just skip ahead to the conclusion. Chris already <laughs> mentioned that as a possibility, and I'm upset, and I've just had Yes, but I things. wanted to reveal it to you that that's actually what it Too is. Too bad, I did it for you. <laughs> it's it's you. And, this, and this is why you say in the video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, it comes in an Xbox One Xbox out of cardboard boxes. So you get an Xbox, <laughs> <laughs> Xbox One X cardboard box box um you don't have to unbox your xbox one x cardboard box box either oh and head. um <laughs> yeah so alex i appreciate thank you. you no one else does i appreciate you a little <laughs> thank you <laughs> anyway <laughs> so yeah if you if you want an um xbox eclipse i don't know why they chose that name plus the elite controller that breaks all the time the new um, one it's the new elite controller they revamped it so does it keep breaking because they've revamped it like six times i think this is the official yes. uh, elite 2 controller so it's a new model 
I, I absolutely, oh, sorry, sorry. Just, just for a second, I absolutely love the concept of the Elite Controller. Well, okay, when I say I absolutely love, I absolutely hate it. It's hilarious because it's like 180 bucks or something, and it's yeah. an Xbox One controller. And there's a whole lot of people, it's especially with um, like FIFA and Call of Duty, um, you know, tryhards that are like, dude, you got to get the Xbox One X Elite controller, whatever it's called, because it'll make you get more kills in Call of Duty. But, 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 but my extra buttons. Extra paddles. The way that it works is it actually uses macros. So you can macro a button function, like a button combo, to paddles on the back of the controller. Oh, so in a way, it's actually kind of like it's cheating. No, no. Mm, yeah, but it's like buying a mechanical keyboard and thinking you're going to be better at Call of Duty. Well, no, if there's macros, no, but... that's like buying a keyboard with macro buttons. Okay, so you so... guys must have had a keyboard with macros, right? Nope. Everyone must have had one at yes. one point. I have okay. uh, I have There's one. a reason I don't own one anymore. Because, well, I don't want a gaming keyboard. But regardless, uh, the, I don't find them useful at all. Like, what do you use so, yours for? Okay, so I had two use cases for my macro. <laughs> one was planet side or no no not planet side sorry um tribes ascend because the the quick chat system in the game was like vgs and that was a a, a your character would say something like shazbot or mm -hmm. something like that so i had a bunch of macros set up just so i now, could quick toggle sorry, those. out of interest was it a macro where it pressed multiple keys at once or did you just have extra keys that were unbound because i like that concept no. They they were basically no no basically I had them hit the three keys in series with like a two millisecond uh, delay in the key press okay. because you need to be able to click through the menu. Okay. Um, but then the second one, and I'm slightly ashamed to admit this one, but do you guys remember the wonderful remember. browser game known as Cookie oh, Cutter? Yeah, no, no, of course. Ah, I mean, like yes, but you don't have to use uh, <laughs> so basic for that these days. You can just download. No, no. So what I did is I created a toggleable macro. Mm -hmm to click the cookie at, at one millisecond intervals. But what I found out was if you ever clicked off of the cookie to anywhere else, Windows would freak out and would <laughs> yes, bog down your yes. system. Yeah, do that. <laughs> and then you're struggling, like you're opening and closing a bunch of things at once. You're like, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, you're just waiting for the macro software to eventually catch yeah. up to those 1,050 key oh, presses yeah. that... that <laughs> It's just pending. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, 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 seriously, like, like macros. I've only ever seen being useful in like certain MMOs. Um, I've, I've heard some people use it for uh, games like Path of Exile. Um, I find it's a lot but, more niche than uh, gaming companies want to market it as. You know? Yeah, I mean, like, like you I can think would make. Dude, there was an entire keyboard based around that. I think Logitech or Razer still sells it. It's literally just well, a big keyboard, like a hand-sized keyboard made entirely of macro keys. Oh, oh wait, are you talking about the 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 orb yeah. was cool? No, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah, but it's all macros. Yeah, so so it had the macro functionality, but but most people just rebound it to like WASD yeah. and your Q and E and your numbers just because it was more. Accessible. I genuinely kind of like but, that as just an ergonomic gaming keyboard because it's ergonomic and it's got all the keys that you'd usually use in a game mm -hmm. yep i agree but i think i mean honestly like in terms of like macro key presses unless like like look at the razor mamba when that came out a lot of people or i think one of the big uh marketing of the 12 buttons next to your thumb was doing macros but then a lot of people in like mobas were just using the number keys as number keys Mm. For for just pressing your buttons yeah. on the or at your wasn't thumb. it something like Quake standardized the one through nine on not the numpad but you know above the thing yeah because that that's what I played Quake three a lot when I was a kid and I know I know Quake that's why I, uh, Quake champions had yeah, that I struggled um, to use the number pad for just typing in numbers for the longest time because I was used to one through zero from Quake right which is a bad habit I guess but whatever. Yeah. So on the topic of um, games being released, do you want to introduce the next segment, Mr. Friculus? Oh, God, are we doing all yes. of these? Well, <laughs> it's the last one. Oh, okay. Oh, we're not talking about uh, the chickens? 
We can talk about the chickens. Actually, no, Frick, let's, wanna... let's not talk about the chickens. No. <laughs> we we'll just leave yeah, okay. game. Okay, no chickens then. <laughs> you want to, okay, you, you do the chickens one, Cynical. No. No, we're not talking about chickens. <laughs> yeah. So, so, Frick. Frick, you got this oh, one? Oh, yeah, I got you. Hang on. I was, I was in chicken mode for some reason. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get the chickens off the brain. <laughs> Backyard chicken memories. Um, all right. <laughs> so recently, uh, Postal 4 got released. Oh boy. Uh, and Postal, <laughs> the entire series, is better yet known as probably one of the more controversial game series of all time. Uh, I <laughs> would tell you what you can do in the game, but the thing is, I, I, I can't on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, There's an there unhinged of... GTA. Yeah. At best. Yeah. Um, it's very, very, uh, very a fun. Game. Yeah, think- the whole idea is you can go anywhere and do anything, and I mean that in a very, very serious sense. Of the word you can do anything that you want. Uh, think of all of the controversial things that people do in GTA, and that GTA gets uh, a lot of flack for, and multiply it by a factor of probably ten. Just to give you an idea, <laughs> you can use a cat as a shotgun silencer for seconds. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind yes. of like a modern re-envisionment of Conker's Bad Fur Day. Yeah, uh, it's a pretty yeah. interesting little commentary on society. Uh, well, and in, in, in one or that. two aspects of it. So The game is early access right now, so if you want it, you can get it for pretty cheap, and it's going to get developed more and more. But, I mean, that's Postal 2 is one of my favorite games of all time, and it, <laughs> it's an incredible game. It's so good. Because I'm like, so in thing. public. Can the I ask something thing... quickly? What happened to Postal 3? Nobody liked it. What Postal oh, was there actually a Postal 3? Uh, yeah, no, it's no, bad. no there, wasn't. there wasn't. It didn't happen. No. Oh, okay. Sorry. There is no Postal 3. Yeah. Right. In fact, yeah, the people running no... the scissors, the people that made Postal 1 and 2, and uh, they, they actually say on the Steam page, it's part of a trilogy, and there's no third game to ever exist at all. There's nothing. It's yeah. that on the actual Steam page. So, there is no yeah. Postal 3 in Bussing, say. There's no right, Postal so 3. It's made in the Unreal Engine 4, which is, well, what everything is made in these days, but it looks good, so that's nice. Yeah, um, well, no, it looks bad. It, the graphics look absolutely awful, but the I'm game... I'm comparing it to the second one. Oh, yeah. Well, then, yes. It wow, <laughs> the second one that's, like, 20 years old? Uh, oh, I it's, mean, like, 15, maybe? released dlc for it last year they made an expansion back <laughs> oh wow yeah so there's That's a big okay. community oh yeah they like, did here's the it's deal gonna be, it's gonna be a pretty good game uh like i said early access probably the best money you're gonna spend on a game that's it's not trying to be offensive, but it's it's attitude is well if you get offended by it then <laughs> don't look over here this is not yeah. for you here's the thing this this isn't good. I can already tell that this won't be good. Here's the deal. We have Postal. It's a franchise. It's I don't want to call it a beloved franchise. It's an infamous franchise. It's something that people know about, at least. And it's on Steam Early Access. Any existing, like, non-indie franchise on Steam Early Access is always a bad sign. And second of all, we've just moved past the point of Postal being shocking especially on Steam Early Access, where Valve has had to pull games like Active Shooter, a game in which you play as a school shooter, and Rape Day, a game that Mm. is exactly what it sounds like. Postal is tame. Like, yeah, but see, I mean, the Postal but, was never trying to, like, make people angry. Postal was just being a satirical comment, like, commentary yeah. on everything. Well, yeah, sure. Yeah, but- it was kind of... Okay, cool. So it's not going for edgy. It's just going for satire. If you want edgy, you can go probably... play Hatred. Hatred is it's the most very... edgy. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, Hatred wow. is like Linkin Park, the video uh, game. Oh, my God. <laughs> my name is not important. Yeah. To God. Yeah. Here, here, here's the thing. It's like, like, obviously, Postal 2 is Postal 2, and everybody remembers it for what it is. The only thing that will tank Postal 4 is if they just try to curb it for the sake of getting as many sales out as possible. Honestly, so long as they just stick to the, the original formula, I don't think anybody is going to complain. Mm. It's kind of like it's kinda like Borderlands 2 in that regard. It's like Borderlands 2 is unapologetically Borderlands 2. Mm. 
So, so take it for what it is. If the game is developed as it was, then it's going to be a successful yeah, right now. And Randy got, Pitchford's involved, so it's just trash. He's got it's got a ninety percent positive rating it. on wow. Steam right now, so it looks like it's doing pretty good. Yeah, and, and that's the other thing is like Steam will not be able to withdraw it from the store, knowing the legacy that Post will have. It's just like the moment that Steam rips it off of Steam. And there's going to be a huge uproar, and there's going to be that much, many more sales through a different platform. Yeah. Oh, oh they put it, back on. <laughs> it mm. becomes an Epic Store exclusive. <laughs> oh, no. oh, that will not happen. That will oh, not happen. Can you imagine, though? I, 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 I'm not expecting it to be a very good game. Like, the Steam early access for an existing franchise just makes me really wary. Um, also, just thinking about Postal 2, please explain how the acoustics of a cat sound suppressor <laughs> work. No, let's, let's no. not. <laughs> I have opinions on this now. <laughs> no, is we're that, not. I would rather leave that to your imagination. Is because the voice actor that does Duke Nukem is the, vo- is the main star. So John St. John oh. does the voice acting in the game for oh, the main character. Incidentally, John St. John uh, is a justice of the peace, and he can, uh, he can do your wedding. Wait, marry you? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, why okay. not? Yeah, I uh... <laughs> hey, it's a new Air Force. Okay. Well <laughs> that's interesting. So I think Again, let's not get it. Let's <laughs> not delve into the uh, cat shotgun silencer topic. <laughs> <laughs> and that, no, we're just done because we're yeah, not talking about. I think we are. Yes, we're not. We're not talking about the chickens either. So yeah, no chickens. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's been a long one, but it's been pretty interesting. So yeah, nice. we had topics when we started. <laughs> <laughs> we sure Ooh, did, buddy. Definitely. So from Frick Frock, from Simmons, and from our big boy Babushka. Thank you very much. (laughs) My babushka. (laughs) That was out of context. Our babushka. (laughs) Our babushka. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us. It's been splendid. Good night. And indeed. Yeah. Goodbye. It was so hard to not laugh at the babushka. Because I scrolled down no. and I <laughs> didn't realize it was there. <laughs> Alright, what the fuck is this? Babushka. Babushka is all the way down. Hang on. I want, some, I want some potato soup later, Chris. <laughs>